I was uh, saying before, now it's Q&A time, and I believe we have some some questions from from the from the audience today. Uh, so we are going to cover them now. So now I ask you, everyone, the, to the speakers, to activate the camera again and your microphones, and then I will be addressing the questions uh, to you. Um, so the first one is from Olivier Ruel, and he's asking about uh, more details on the sensor use and the data collected and the breakdowns avoided during the pre-com project testing. So I believe this one is to you for you, Basin. So um, go ahead. Yeah, uh, we used the uh, accelerometer for picking up uh, vibration uh, signals and. Uh, these uh, sensors are partly uh, wireless and partly wired and wired in the areas where the wireless uh, couldn't uh, um, couldn't work properly because of disturbances. Uh, so the data usually gathered automatically in, uh, uh, in very specified time for some sensors, uh, the measurements launched by the operator and uh, directly the measurement processed uh, uh, locally and send uh, to a local cloud and from the local cloud to precom cloud also automatically in order to be uh, processed once again, analyzed, uh, uh, washed and uh, the diagnosis prediction recommendation is done and the output, uh, the results of the in the form of recommendations usually send back uh, uh, to the user cases uh, for specific uh, persons uh, through uh, called the uh, PLIV uh, production live information uh, visualization as a part uh, together with the augmented reality in one iPad uh, used by uh, the, the end user at each company. Uh, by, by this case, uh, everything uh, uh, done after each measuring opportunity uh, is actually followed by analysis, diagnosis and the recommendations. And then one of the type recommendation is um, sorts of uh, diagnosis, prediction, recommendation table, telling if there is a damage, localizing where the damage, in which machine, in which component, assessing the damage severity and the predicting uh, damage development in the near future and recommend what to do. Also, uh, an, another uh, message sent concerning monitoring non-rotating parts, such as a cutting tool or uh, creeping blade uh, at uh, the paper mill machine. Uh, also, periodically sent reports concerning the condition of ball screw in a particular machine in Spinia. Uh, and in this case, we cover almost all the um, significant components identified by, by PRECOM. I hope I answered the question. Yes, yes, thank you very much, Basim. And uh, now, uh, before closing, I would have some quick uh, also questions to the other speakers. I, I will start with Daniel, and maybe also Fanasis wants to work something up if they have worked together in the Set Break project. So I would like also to know which uh, also kind of data were you using for the fault prediction in your whole forming uh, use case? Um, I, we have the acoustic emission data from the press. Uh, we have the press data itself. Uh, we have some quality data and we have the maintenance logs uh, on the press uh, together with the reasons for maintenance. Um, Thanasis, anything to add? No, no, Daniel, uh, exactly that. Uh, maybe you can also uh, share, I believe I've seen uh, uh, the picture from the press in one of your slides where we showcase the, the full process. Uh, if, you, if you share it again, maybe we can showcase exactly where are these data are obtained. So we have some data from, from the metal reel. Uh, we have data from the, from the input quality check uh, we have the um, acoustic emission from the seven, the different dies, uh, as well as the die housing and the machine itself. 
uh, and where you have the quality check on the end. Um, there is some data of the press itself. Um, and of course, the, the maintenance logs of the different uh, of the different dies going into maintenance for either preventive or corrective maintenance. Thank you, thank you very much, Stanley. Um, I see from, from this uh, slide, uh, but I also recall that Hale was speaking about the uh, amount of corrective maintenance. Uh, before I was, I think that in his case was nearly 50%. I want to ask you that from before to now, uh, if anything changed thanks to the implementation of the technologies in the 4C, um, in the, in the uh, sorry, in the prophecy project. So I don't know if you can tell us more about this. Yes, that would have been uh, great, uh, Diego. Um, as said, uh, at the start of the project, we um, we took a year of data and uh, we looked back uh, in the number of uh, uh, maintenance work orders, and there was a balance be uh, of 50% uh, of uh, corrective maintenance uh, against preventive uh, maintenance. Um, and now, uh, as already said, uh, the the data, the predictive. Um, the prediction of the RUL, the remaining useful lifetime of our tooling has become available in the in the month of September. So this is actually uh, end of August, beginning September that we have this information available. So it is a bit too early um, to already uh, have the benefits uh, to mm -hmm. see the benefits in the in the production line and in the in the number of uh, in reduction in the number of corrective maintenance, but mm -hmm. yeah, we we are um, we are confident that having these technologies um, at hand currently, um, that we we will avoid breakdowns and move from corrective to predictive maintenance for sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for your answer. Um, we can conclude maybe with two uh, fast questions for Fide and Aurenak um, colleagues. So maybe, I don't know, Mikel, um, this is a question for you. So Ignacio was speaking about different proposed data analytics methods. So I don't know if you can tell me also some uh, difference among these uh, tools and methods that you have been used in the programs project. Okay, as Ignacio presented, we have three different ways for evaluating the, the, con the condition of the components. The first is the BPT, the second is the Asia, and the third is the quick roll. Actually, at the beginning of the project, we we had foreseen only the traditional approach, which was the BPT. So to go through the digital twin of the critical components to understand if they are degrading. Actually, it becomes immediately clear that after deploying uh, the ECM, by which we collect information from the components and for, from the sensors, the controllers, and so on, we needed a fast solution to uh, actually determine which was the rule. And in order to deploy a digital twin approach, a lot of data and of time was required. Hence, we, uh, with the collaboration of the University of Budapest, we deployed this quick rule that actually used information about the age of components corrected by the actual load under which the components are used and using information provided by manufacturers to, comp to have a fast computation of the rule, even if it is not as robust, as reliable as the uh, digital twin approach. In the middle, we have, we have used an, uh, a data-driven approach by the Asia to determine the, the status of components for which we cannot do a, a precise model. So it is modeled basically as a black box by data-driven uh, approaches. And so Asia covers the gap between uh, a very fast but less reliable solution, which is the quick roll, and uh, a long but uh, very robust system, which is the digital twin approach. Mm -hmm. Really, really, really interesting your answer. Um, I believe your use case is really uh, interesting as well because it involves the machine supplier, the milling 
uh, tool, uh, supplier and, and the final user. So um, I believe that you, uh, Michele Aspidia, are you looking to provide after sales uh, services to your customers? So uh, my question could be, because we've seen that several partners have helped in the development of these solutions in the programs um, platform, the programs project, but I'd like you to develop more on, on this because um, how do you see this platform? Is something that can be open to third party modules or? Yeah, you can tell us more about, about this. Well, sure. We, we had since the beginning of the conception of uh, the platform, the idea that uh, the modules of the platform itself may be interchangeable, even with third party solution. That's why interfaces between the various modules are si very simple. They are based on REST technologies. So basically they use web services to exchange uh, JSON files. This means that uh, once you cope with the authentication and security means that we used to protect the, the, the communication of the information between the modules, any external tool can be plugged in directly in the platform with very basic creation of interfaces. And uh, we meant to do this because uh, the idea is that, as you we seen earlier, we have already three different methods of data analytics for understanding the, the rules for some components. But if we want to add more, it is, it is very easy to implement this web-based interface and just exchange JSON files with the rest of the modules and thus implement new for party modules to cover mm -hmm. the parts that we are not covering right now. Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much. So after this Q&A session, I think we can uh, wrap up. I would just uh, remind you um, one uh, event that will be closing this uh, use case uh, presentation series. So we'll be having a third webinar on use cases and we will be covering specifically the return of investment, which was also uh, briefly presented today by hey, uh, um, explaining the analysis that they have carried out in the Prophecy project and will be uh, for this webinar featuring uh, two uh, further use cases, which will be the Jaguar Land Rover in the automotive manufacturing and the FFT. Uh, so we'll, we'll be sending you more information to, to those following today, so stay connected. And uh, yeah, I want to thank you all for being here today, following the session, and a special thanks goes to all the speakers today, starting from Basim and Thanasis, to uh, Daniel and Heia, and finally, of course, Michele and Ignacio. And I want to thank you all the people that helped me in the organization of the event, in the dissemination and communication of this event, and special thanks goes also to my colleague, Ricardo, which is in the backstage behind the scenes, and you cannot see him today. Thank you again very much to everyone, and see you soon in the third and final uh, webinar in November 2020. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice time. Thank you, Diego. Bye. bye. Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye. Bye. Bye bye.